Hi, it's amazing having you here. You see, every week, twice a week, we bring you the Simple Things podcast. 9 p.m. on Wednesdays, 9 p.m. on Sundays. Now, the reason is very simple. We want you to start internalizing those beautiful concepts that will help you to work on your life and business sources. Ladies and gentlemen, very important to note that a lot of people allow some thoughts into their hearts that are not compatible with success. And most times, those thoughts are sabotaging their hearts. They are sabotaging their interests. The thoughts are sabotaging who they become. Life and business success is mostly 80% psychology and 20% practical. So when you fail in your mind, you are not going to succeed anywhere because the 20% of the practical will be shortchanged by 80% of the psychology. That is why it's very important that every week you turn into this and then work on your mind. But let's talk about the three thoughts you should never allow into your mind. The three thoughts you should never think. Number one is regress about your past. Never, ever have regrets about your past. Now, get me right. It doesn't mean you are not going to understand some things you didn't do well and then say, okay, I need to correct them. It doesn't also mean you won't understand some things that you didn't manage well and you said, next time I'll do that. It doesn't mean that what happened to you yesterday will come today again and happen to you in the same way, in the same ferocity, negatively, and then you say, oh, you don't regret things. No, you can't keep on being, you know, I don't want to use the F word. You can't just keep messing up and then you want things to always work. So when we say don't regret, we don't mean that you must go ahead and keep making, you know, mistakes and all those. There are two kinds of mistakes I've told you, like Jebezus would say, Experimental mistake and operational mistakes. Experimental mistakes are the mistakes you made because you are learning something. So whatever mistake you do, you are going to compensate it, you know, as you understand that and keep working on. But we also have what we call operational mistake. Mistakes you make out of your incapability and capacity to learn. Yeah? When you make those mistakes, there's a problem. The problem is that you have you are like somebody who is in primary school or secondary school and you keep failing and you keep being there and you are not being promoted and then you are not doing anything about it. That is what operational mistakes look like, operational failures. So we wanted to have experimental failures but not operational failures. But even if you have operational failures or experimental failures, the rule is don't ever regret your past events, your past fail, past failures, your past advice. There are some times you remember some people who were in your life and the way they treated you, the way they used you because of your naivety and all those, you become so bitter. If you count, either in your workplace or in school or your lecturers or your teachers or your parents or your siblings or your friends or, you know, you, and, and your colleagues and you get so upset. No, don't get upset. They are learning calls. Always give yourself that, you know, latitude for vulnerability. You cannot know anything. You are not God in heaven. You cannot be wiser than your exposure, your education, your environment, and your experiences. You cannot. So you do your best right now. And then if it goes south, don't always regret them. Okay? Please, there's a difference. When we say don't regret them, we say we didn't say don't learn from them. Don't regret them, but learn from them so that they don't repeat themselves. Okay, so that is number one. Things you should never allow, you thought you should never allow yourself to think. Number one is don't regret your past. Okay? Number two Obsessive thoughts about failure. A lot of people are so obsessed with failure thought that it doesn't allow them 
to do anything. I'll give you a story, and I've said this story many times. You know, I was a young person, fresh from the university, opportune to meet, you know, somebody who just became a commissioner in my state. And the, somebody introduced um, me to the person and said, Oh, Cal is a brilliant guy. He can, you know, manipulate a computer. He can write speeches. He can do this. So I was helping that commissioner, you know, with some things and all those. And one day, the commissioner told me, go and bring, um, because I, I had a company then, Solid Technologies, that was into um, phone repairs and phone accessories and bringing in, you know, some kinds of phones and all those kinds of things. Because that was when you know, phone, um, GSM came in newly. So she said, go and bring a proposal to go and train so, so, so people in the, in all the local government in that state. <laughs> you see, that was how I ran away from that woman. What do you think happened? When they say somebody is afraid of failure, that is what it means. Also, when they say somebody is afraid of success, that's what it means. I ran away as a very young person in my mid-twenties, you know, I should have made a lot of money that would have jump-started me in life so much. But I ran away simply writing a proposal that I write, I can write every day. But the thought of going through all the tens of local governments and going to teach that and so I don't want, I don't want to fail in this thing. I don't want that woman, she'll give me a job now and I will fail and then her name will be out there negatively. I, I don't want, let me just do it like this. After all, I have a regular work and that was how I missed that opportunity. I was very obsessive. I had very obsessive thoughts about failure. Failure for me looked like death sentence. Failure for me looked like, no, you can't fail, you know. I, yeah, but there's nothing wrong with failure. Yes? So the first thought is that don't ever regret your past events and and actions and, and all those. Now, if you wrong somebody, please go and apologize. If you do something right, go and amend it. But if, you know, there's something that happened in your life, you found that they were your mistake, you lost money, this one, there's no amount of crying, there's no amount of regret that will bring the money back, so it will hold you down. The same with obsessive thoughts about failure. The failure you are thinking about hasn't already happened. Why don't you go there and fail? Why don't you allow the failure to happen? Why don't you allow it to just happen so that you can say, why I'm no more doing this kind is because I failed in this. So why not? So the problem becomes that a lot of people have the spirit, <laughs> well, in religion we call it spirit, they have the habit, the attitude of what? Perfectionism. I used to be like that. I want everything to be perfect before I move. I want, yeah, a lot of people are like that. Now, it is not negative 100%. It can make you a best student. It can make you, you know, an excellent person. You don't make mistakes and all those. But you see, it has its negative. It is, perfectionism is inferiority complex inverted. The same way pride is inferiority complex inverted. So perfectionism is that you are not enough. You try to be enough and then you want everything to be right so that nobody insults you, so that nobody, you know, you are afraid inside. That is why you are not free. I used to be like that. Yes. And he held me back for a long time. So what's the point I'm making? Always remember that things can always go wrong. You mustn't kill yourself for that. That is what I call human condition. Things can always go wrong. Don't kill yourself for that. You can buy the wrong plot and the person will eat your money. You can even go to the law enforcement agencies. They will be compromised. You can go to the court and then you won't get justice. You can So just know that these are what we call human condition. They happen. It's like you are on earth. Sometimes you may feel headache. Sometimes you may feel stomach upset. Sometimes you may feel catter. Sometimes you may feel fever. Those are natural human condition. There's nothing you can do about it. So what do you need to do? What you need to do is to know that fearing failure is not a solution. 
What is the solution? Is do, fail, learn, do again, succeed. Do, fail, learn, do again, succeed. Fail as fast as you can so that you can succeed as fast as you can. Okay? Very important. So that's the second thought you should never allow into your heart, your mind. Obsessive, obsessive thought about failure. That doesn't remove your risk management capacity, your capacity to be careful and check the fast. It doesn't remove that. But that thing that every time you have checked, everything is okay, and you want to move, you say, what if, what if, move, and let's see the if. If the if appear, you treat the if. <laughs> okay, the, if the if appear, you give an apple. <laughs> okay, okay, but that's on the jocular part. Make sure that you are not obsessive about failure. Number three, thoughts that you are not enough. You know, that's what we call imposter syndrome. Most time you are most times you are too much to the extent that yourself will tell yourself that you are not enough. Imposter syndrome, you 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 have that vacuum, you feel not enough, you know, you, you get a master, you get a first degree, and it tells you if you can get a PA a master, you get a master, your head will tell you if you can get a PhD, you get a PhD, I say if you can get postdoc, you get postdoc, it tells you if you can, you know, that is how you waste your life. Yeah. A lot of folks read books. I, I'm a, an avid reader. You know, if you come to my programs, I tell you how many books I read in a day. The point is, a lot of people use reading and preparation to do what? To conceal their laziness. They use reading. They use preparation to conceal their um, laziness. So the point is, you must not always think you are not enough. Now, whatever you don't have for the next level, you don't need it for that next level. Or you're a caterer, you, a caterer, you don't have a refrigerator, you don't need it for that next level. You don't have an uh, oven, you don't need it for, that, for the next level. You don't have a um, chaffing dish, you don't need it for the next level. You don't have, you know, you anything you have now is what you need for the next level. For instance, before you go to university, you don't have a university degree but you have o level o level is what you need for the university degree unless you deliberately went and failed your o level if you are in primary school you take your common entrance you are not in secondary you don't need secondary degree uh, secondary school certificate to go to secondary school what you need is primary school so if you are poor today, you don't need the certificate of riches to become <laughs> to become wealthy. What you need is a poor man's certificate. You show with a poor woman's certificate. That's what you need, and you will be admitted into the league of what of 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 um, the rich people. So there is no excuse. If you don't have your leg, you don't need it to succeed. If you don't, I never had my legs. I had it one year, six months, and you know I had polio, and then that's that. As I'm, you are, if you look very well, you see my crutches. Yes, yeah, you can see my two crutches here. You see, okay, you see my two crutches. The point is that I don't have my legs, and I don't need it to be successful. I never needed it for my bachelor's, my master's, my PhD. I never needed it for my businesses. I never needed it for anything. The point is, I know I don't have it. So because I don't have it, I don't have to kill myself about it. Overlook the things that are not and mind the things that are and they use them to get the things that are not. There are what we the, in business management, there's what we call um, key resources or in business success modeling. Find the basic minimum, the basic minimum that you need to start up. If you don't have resources, panda to resourcefulness. I'm a web designer, app builder, programmer, everything in one, uh, speaker, consultant, whatever. Eh? Because I never had money to start any business. If I need a website and I don't have the money, two fifty thousand, one million to give to anybody, I do what? I go and learn how to design website. And sometimes I learn it on my own. I design the website. <laughs> so before I started, you know, talking to you, there's a new company I'm opening on Life Life Executive Programs. You know, I, I, I decided to design the website. Now I even have money to do that, but I decided to do that. Yeah? 
The point is, if you don't have resources, pander to resourcefulness. Use your energy, use your wisdom. I yeah, last week I told you a story about the lady who needed a car for her business. She couldn't find. She doesn't have the money. She started going around her vicinity. All the people that have two, three, four cars, she go to them and say, please, can I be washing your car? These are people she knows. They have meds. They have uh, get men. They have everything. And I said, why would you want to wash our car? She'll say, I, I see you have a lot of cars. I want to. But we have people who wash her car. She, she kept disturbing them. And they were asking, why do you want to wash her? She said, to be truthful, I need a car to run my business. But I feel that sitting thinking about it makes no sense. So can I start washing people's car? Maybe one day they will find opportunity to help me or something like that. They said, ah, wow. When she, she said she talked to about five people or so and all those. And you see, one day somebody said, come, do you like this one? She said, yes. I said, okay, go and repair it and use it. And that's what she has. She got a very good car. That thing that is a problem for you, for instance, you need a laptop. There were times laptop was a problem for me. In fact, I went to a program in Europe. I virtually starved myself, saved all the money that I was given in that program to buy a laptop for 900 euros. In fact, I had to go to, um, I, I was in, in, in um, 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 KU Leuven, Catholic, Catholic University Leuven, KU Leuven, Catholic University Leuven, um, in Leuven, Catholic University Leuven. I was there, Catholic University Leuven, and uh, I had to go to Media Mart two times in Brussels, in Belgium, to go and look if I can find a cheaper one. Yeah? 900 euro. That used to be a problem for me. I had to starve myself. You know, thank God I didn't die. Just starving myself. Just to get 900 euros to buy. But you come today, computer is no more a problem. There are computers everywhere. In fact, there's one I just bought, you know, and I've not even opened it. So, at every point in life, your problem will change. My problem now is not computer again. Yeah? I, 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 those are no more problems. My problem now is no more to eat. My problem now is no more car. My problem now is no more. But if I had waited until I get the computers, I get the cars, I get the whatever, it, I would not stand. I, I remember I used a desktop, lap, a desktop that, a, a rainbow net internet, that when you put it on, for, for it to load one page, you are going to stay for, for one year. And I used it, I used it, I used it until I was able to apply for that academic fellowship and I was able to be chosen and I went for the fellowship. If I was waiting for a laptop, I wouldn't have gone. But I was, you know, I used resourcefulness to push through. So you are more than enough how you are right now. It doesn't mean that there are there are no characters you should work on. doesn't mean that there are no issues you should treat in your life. What it means is that what you have is enough to start the journey to where you are going, the journey of a thousand miles starts under your feet. Just the first, you know, step, the second, the third, and before you know it, yeah? Now, if you are listening to this program and you have not subscribed, you've not followed, you've not put on the notification button, you've not shared, I encourage you, just use one second and just do that and put on the notification button so that you can always get good stuff okay so your ability to know that you are enough that your mind is sabotaging you yeah a lot of times uh, i there was a time walking past through a crowd was a problem even in the university was walking past a crowd was an issue for me i think look at it i'm not walking like every other person sometimes i fall sometimes i you know and I want to tell you, like falling is that like yesterday I went for a very high profile, very high profile with or a meeting with foreign organizations and embassies and all those American everywhere and all those Canadian, European Union and all those. When I went to ease myself in the bathroom in the hotel, I felt very terrible falling. Yeah, I don't know that there were water on on the on the floor, my crutches slipped me and I felt very, the man that was going out, rushed back to help me stand up and all those and all that, you know, I had to. 
Yeah, I kept up, hey, okay, you know, finish my <laughs> duty there, or, you know, try to clean myself up and all those. Now, can you imagine if I put it in my head? Everywhere I go, I'm unhappy because I'm disabled. What can I do about my disability? What can I possibly do? My parents have tried. I use crutches. I stand up right now. I move around. I uh, travel everywhere I go, standing erect and all those. Yeah, so why won't I be grateful? The point is your ability to know that you are enough is more than necessary. Everything I lost in my life, God has compensated, uh, compensated with my brain, my capacity. If I can't run around, that means I can sit, I can sit one place. Yeah? If I can sit one place, what it means is that I can read more, I can, you know, write more, I can think more. And all these things, reading, thinking, writing, you know, acquiring knowledge, and uh, you know, acquiring the right skills, they are the new gold in the 21st century. They are the new good. And every money I've made, I've made them speaking, talking, consulting, thinking, and all those kinds of things. The point becomes that for every negative, there is a positive. For every um, um, cloud, there's a silver lining. For every obstacle, there's a miracle. For every end of the road, you can find a bend in the road if you look deeper. For every, you know, stumbling block, there's a stepping stone. Your ability to be able to understand this will give you the 80% you need psychology, the 80% mindset to be able to drive the 20% of the physical and action. Otherwise, the little anytime you do a little work, your mind will sabotage you. Do you think it will work? People are, will laugh at me. I don't know. Some people are doing it. Um, what if they laugh at me? What if it doesn't work? What if all the money I put goes down the drain? What if my friends laugh at me? What if nobody attends the program? What if nobody pays? What if, you know, what if they insult me? What are you doing? With, will you eat respect? Let them insult you. Yes? They even insulted our Savior. Let them insult you. And then, as far as you are able to push through your idea, I want to encourage you to understand the power, the power of knowing that you are enough to throw away the imposter syndrome from the window. Yeah? So breathe in, breathe out, tell yourself, Hi, my name is Kali. I am enough. That way, you're going to see a new lease in your life. I want to appreciate you for listening in. Remember to follow, share, comment, and uh, put on the notification button if you ever feel you need to talk with me. Please send me an email or drop a comment on, on, on the comment sessions and I will reply or my workers will do that. Remember, only those, only those, only those who do go to the bank, it's not just those who talk or those who think only. If you finish everything and you don't do, you can go to the bank. People reward you for what you can do. Start doing right now. See you soon.